standing here on the edge of the Hudson River in the Hudson River Valley. And then you're the town of Peekskill, New York. Peekskill is a great place to stop and see three distinct geologic districts here in New York. The Hudson Highlands to the south, which we've driven across, and then behind me, you'll see a large intrusive granite that's Devonian in age, called the Peekskill Granite. And this was pushed up during the Taconic Orogeny, which was a much later uh, mountain building event that forms all of the scenery to the east side of New York. And that scenery is called the Taconic Highlands. Across the river, we're going to the Catskill Mountains. And the Catskills are very different entirely, much younger rocks, sedimentary rocks. And so we've got a wide variety of geology all right here in one place, and you can see it all right here from the shores of the Hudson and Peekskill. Sometimes driving through eastern New York is difficult to stop and look at the rocks on the side of the road. But here at Peekskill, right on the riverfront, you can get down to this jetty and you can see all of the different metamorphic rocks that make up the Hudson Highlands and the Taconic Mountains. And it's a wide variety because these were once sedimentary rocks that were laid down in the Precambrian time that were then buried, metamorphosed, and crunched together in this mountain building event that we call the Grenville, and then uplifted again and exposed. And you can see a wide variety of rocks from igneous rocks like granites and gneisses and other things over to a lot of these metamorphic rocks. And right here I'm just sitting looking around and I can see low-grade metamorphic rocks like phyllites, schists. When you start to see the little thin lines you start to think schist. A little bit higher metamorphism and you get what I'm sitting on which is these sparkly beautiful mica schists. And as you continue to add heat and pressure during this mountain building process, depending on the type of rock you started with you'll get things like gneisses. And here we can see these beautiful thick bands of crystals that are forming, replacing minerals that are already in the rock, and eventually those bands start to curl up and fold up, and those are the most intense rocks we get before they start to melt again and be essentially become magma. And so you can see all of those types laid out nicely. If you'd gone back to the time of the Ice Ages, there was so much ice that was locked up on the North American continent that the the ocean levels were actually several hundred feet lower than they are today. In fact, you could have carried the river about a hundred miles off the shore of New York at the time. What that did was it created these canyons that cut way down and eventually the ice melted and the sea levels rose and they flooded those canyons. We call those fjords. In places like Norway, we have a lot of flooded canyons formed by glaciers or fjords. And we have the same thing here. And what's interesting about the ones here in central New York is they all point the wrong way. So most rivers have canyons that encounter them in the direction that they're going. And so they all should be pointing to the south. But in fact, they're pointing to the north. The metamorphic rocks that form the hills along both sides of the Hudson River here, just east of the town of Peekskill, are all part of that Hudson Highlands district, those metamorphic rocks that date back to the Precambrian age. But pretty soon, we're gonna cross over into Bear Mountain. And Bear Mountain is the eastern edge of that district where it really starts to come into this area of sedimentary rocks that's preserved from the Ordovician, the Silur Silurian, and then the Devonian. That wedge of clastic rocks is called the Catskill Delta. And the Catskill Delta gets its name from the Catskill Mountains, which begin there and will follow those further west and north. You see a lot of these sort of nondescript gray rocks in this whole part of the country. And when you look closely, what you realize is they look a little bit like siltstones or, or shales or sandstones. And the reality is, is that they were. These are metasedimentary rocks. And metasedimentary rocks are sedimentary rocks that have been to some degree metamorphosed. And these are very old sedimentary rocks that were probably turned into uh, some mixture of slates, phyllites, schists, and that's what we see today at the surface. And sometimes in these metamorphic rocks, you can still see fabrics and things that are inherited from the original sedimentary rock. But they are metamorphic rocks, just sedimentary rocks that have been heated and are very, very old. Whether you're coming up from New York City on the Palisades Parkway or you're coming east from Peekskill across the river, 
Bear Mountain is one of the highest mountains on the western edge of the Hudson River Valley and is great place, is a great place to stop and take a look and see all of the different terrains. Here at the top you'll find Perkins Tower which is a tall uh, overlook and you can climb up yourself to the top and get a panoramic view of everything from the Hudson River to the Catskills, even New York City's skyline on a clear day. So all the rocks underneath Bear Mountain are a rock formation called the Storm King Granite Nice, and it's a Precambrian aged 1.1, over 1.1 billion year old igneous rock that's been assembled as a part of this Hudson Highlands topography. And it is uh, it's a little bit like a granite and a little bit like a gneiss. It has these fractures that carry water that actually has magnetite that's mined on both sides of the mountains. This is a pretty awesome little boulder of the Storm King granite gneiss sitting here. And you can kind of look at this and have a few conversations. One is why they call it a granite. Because of its composition, it's very quartz rich and feldspar rich. It has large crystals. It has large veins pegmatites, if you will, and these large crystals that kind of run through. So very much like a granite. But look at this closely. We see these layers. There's layers of dark mineral and things. Those are much more indicative of a gneiss. And so one way to interpret this rock is it was a metamorphic rock that was pressured so intensely. It's basically all recrystallized to granite. If this had melted and cooled again and allowed to cool, it would have formed a granite. So it's a very cool rock to check out. The Hudson River's played a critical role in New York's history going back to the 1600s. The Hudson is a long, straight, and narrow path between New York City and the city of Albany to the north, and it's a thoroughfare for lots of supplies going up and down the river, and has been for many, many hundreds of years. In fact, this was such a critical area in terms of supply of resources and the transport of resources that it played a critical role in the Revolutionary War. In 1776, George Washington set up this area as a base for the Continental Army. And just a, a few years later, the British had occupied New York City and were constantly pushing and trying to get up this river. One of the reasons they had a hard time were the fortifications built on this curve, this S-shaped curve, right here in Peekskill uh, near Bear Mountain. And that's because the geology forces the river around a corner where we can get cannons and we can get forts in place to protect the thoroughfare. And that was important for the Continental Army to stay intact through the hard years of the Revolutionary War, as that kept supplies flowing to the Army. If they had lost this corner and lost control of the Hudson and let the British move north, the United States may not exist today. Today we're dealing with rivers like the Hudson River, but 100,000 years ago we were dealing with rivers of ice. And those rivers of ice cut down as they moved across the landscape, picking up sediment, cutting more sediment out until we had these deep canyons like fjords in Norway. And that's what you have here along this Hudson River Valley. This is a valley, a river of ice, cutting it out. And when the river finally started to form and the ice started to melt, all of that sediment is dropped and flushed into these valleys, filling them up. So now we have behind me in Iona Island, well over a thousand feet of sediment stacked up, filling in the bottom of that canyon or fjord. Here at Storm King Mountain, we can see some of the, the faulting and some of the deep thrusting that occurred during the Taconic Orogeny. And so if you go back to the Granville period of time, which would have been the billion year old sort of time frame, well, all these rocks are being deposited and buried off in, in an ocean basin. And these volcanic arcs would line up and the continents would clash. These, these islands would crash into the side of the, what's now the United States. And they would kind of get plastered on and built this framework of very old rocks. And then later, in younger time, we had this taconic orogeny. That occurred in thin sheets, and it actually kind of, it's like two bumpers of the cars hitting each other, and one bumper riding up over the other one. And so they kind of stack up in these sheets, and behind me in this rock, you see some of these metamorphic rocks that are stacked up and tilted vertically in these thin sheets. 
So it's a nice little one outcrop model of how the entire eastern seaboard thrusted up during this mountain building event over 500 million years ago. Geologists use all sorts of information to try and understand the geology of an area. So for example, right now we're in a forest. Why not use the trees and the plants as an indicator of the type of rocks and minerals that are under the ground? Well, it turns out you can do that in a number of ways. Here in this area is a good example. We're just on Bear Mountain, which is topped by this granite gneiss. This granite material actually has very few trees growing on it because trees have a very difficult time rooting in that kind of rock. And so from the space or from the air, it'll be very void of trees. But when you see a contact with the underlying metamorphic rocks, gneisses, schists, those actually contain many more of the minerals and, and cracks and fractures and things that trees like. And so like, for example, here where we're standing is in those gneissic materials. And we're in a forest where we can move just up the hill into the more granitic rocks and there would be nothing taller than me. So you can use the vegetation as a key indicator of the types of rocks that you're walking on. This is a great spot. We can walk right up and lay our hands on this, this rock that's highly tilted. Many of the rocks out here are not flat lying. And one of the principles of geology is, is that when rocks form, they form flat lying. But it's not the case here. That's because tectonic forces that crunch together the Atlantic and the North American continent hundreds of millions of years ago have tilted those rocks from horizontal into a vertical position. And so now we can literally walk along these natural walls of rock and observe the massive forces of nature that were in place here 500, 600, a billion years ago. On day two, after a day of driving over old Precambrian rocks, we're gonna move up into younger rocks today. And by younger, I mean, <laughs> instead of a billion years old, more like 400 or 350 million years old. So we're at the edges of what is known as the beginnings of the Catskill Delta. And the Catskill Delta is a big platform of sedimentary rocks coming from west to east that overlies this old erosional surface that we've been driving along, along these old rocks. And right here is the edge of that system, which is the oldest part, the Silurian part. And it's called Shawangunk Ridge, or the Gunks, here in this part of New York. The gunks are this very long cliff and ridge that extends for about 100 miles, and it's a place where people come from all over to do rock climbing and other activities. It's a beautiful place. And it's all here because of one conglomerate, the Shawgunk conglomerate, that sits at the top. It's extremely dense and hard and erosion resistant, and so it protects that cliff, and we're gonna get up close to see that. That all occurred around Silurian time, so plus or minus all just under that 400 million year mark. And then on top of that, we have a really big thick stack of, of, of deltaic deposits, shales and silts, etc., that continue all the way into Western New York in the Devonian period. And those are the source of some major source rocks and, and shales that we see that produce oil, for example, up closer to Lake Erie. So we haven't seen these rocks behind me before now, but this is a, a little bit of sedimentation that occurred between the Precambrian rocks and between the Taconic orogeny. So there were wetlands that existed in the Cambrian and Ordovician period, part of what's called the Queensland Delta that came from the east. And it filled in this low basin with shales and silts and sort of these quiet sedimentary rocks before the Taconic orogeny occurred around 435 million years ago. And remember, that was a bunch of volcanic arcs slamming into the side of, of North America and New England and pushing all these shingled thrust faults up and loading this part of the continent up. And that set the stage for the deposition of the ridge at the top, which is the Silurian um, Shawgunk uh, conglomerate. So we're going to go up and see the conglomerate, but this is a cool place to stop right here to see these silts and shales and how deformed they are and tilted underneath this overlying conglomerate.
The Shawangunk conglomerate is a very interesting rock and it marks this time when you had these uplifting mountains to the east as the ocean uh, volcanic arcs plowed into North America. It was pushing everything up and so the tops of these very old Precambrian rocks were exposed and eroded and a lot of quartz is in those rocks. And all of that quartz tumbled and rolled down into this basin in central New York and it formed this layer of these chunks of quartz or this conglomerate that we see. And it was very porous and all of the fluid moving through that rock cemented it very tightly. And so today it's a very, very tight quartz conglomerate that has a hardness of seven basically. So it's harder than most of the other rocks. And it also is chemically very inert. It takes about 34 million years to dissolve a cubic centimeter of quartz at room temperature. So it's very stable at our surface. So that's why it forms these high ridges because it just erodes super slowly. And why we get these cliffs where you find the uh, edges of it today. Oh, obviously the glaciers have eroded out this part over the Hudson River, so it's left this part exposed. Well, we're up in the Catskill Mountains now. This is Platt Clove, and we're into the Catskill Delta. And you can see many different sandstone, siltstone, and shale layers that kind of stack up, and there's hundreds and hundreds of feet of this rock, thousands of feet going back to the east. And we, the plan was to go up into the mountains, but as you can see, it started to rain and the clouds have moved in and we can't even see the mountains anymore. So sometimes you have to stay on your toes on a geo road trip. So we're gonna turn around and we're gonna go back down to Hudson River Valley to the Palisades to talk about some, some volcanic rocks and some intrusives. So let's go back down, get out of the rain. If you're on the west side of the city of New York and you look across the Hudson River, you'll see a tall two to 300 foot tall cliff of dark rock. That's the Palisades. And the Palisades is a cliff that extends all the way down the Hudson River that's made up of igneous rock, intrusive rock called diabase that formed back in the Triassic period. So compared to the rocks we saw earlier up the river, these are much, much younger rocks and occurred when magma intruded into shales in this part of New Jersey. Today they're exposed by erosion along the river and you can see these long tall columns and the columns are called hexagonal because columns that form as the magma cools. When it cools it breaks into these hexagonal shapes, six-sided shapes. And the whole cliff breaks off in these columns along these joints. So it's a great place to get out and walk and see an example of volcanic history right here mere miles from New York City. Thanks for coming along with us to see the Hudson River Valley.